So today I am presenting my new to me new car is a 2014 BMW X5 X drive and it's the 50i and this thing is loaded it has almost everything um, but it, you can see here by looking at it it has the M Sport package with the uh, shadow line trim it's got the black kidney grills cold weather package has the driver assistance plus package with the uh, active cruise control and stop and go um, we also have the executive package so you're gonna see the soft closed doors you're gonna get the ceramic controls and as you can tell too that by the headlights it has the lighting package which uh, gives it the full LEDs and the um, automatic high beam and I believe on the X5s they all come standard with xenon lights and the um, LEDs are an option and I highly re recommend the LEDs because the lighting on this car is absolutely fantastic at night and it's like I'm driving with the sun in front of me um, the color is black um, sapphire metallic and the interior is black and it's the, the black Dakota leather the only option I didn't get with this car you know it was used and it was hard to find the way it was was the uh, leather on the dashboard I really really wanted one but the way this one popped up and the option it was clean I couldn't pass it up and you can see right now this car is super clean I also have the rare option um, the third row seat. The third row seat was a rare option. A lot of people didn't order it with the X5s, mainly because you know they were they were small. You know they're only meant for um, small children. Um, but for my needs, I think that would be perfect because if I you know need to throw the kids in the back, they're perfectly fine fitting back there for a short time. But I'll cover that more later in the video. But for now, um, let's walk around and talk about the uh, exterior of the car. So as you walk around, and I just want you guys to take a look at this car, just how beautiful uh, the paint is. I mean, this one, uh, purchased it at uh, 40, 43,000 miles on it, and the paint is just absolutely immaculate for the age and the amount of miles it had. So really got a good deal on it. Uh, it had the windows tinted, 20% uh, tint all around, including the back. So the back's even darker tint than what came from the factory. Uh, the car does have um, smart key. And one thing about the keys, and you know me, I'm always about all about the keys, is the key gives you the M colors on it and on the key itself. To me, I like that. I like the fact that it feels like I have a special car already even though it's not a true M but the fact that they do recognize the M itself so um, different ways obviously lock the the BMW uh, round old S is how you lock the car unlock the trunk and then the panic alarm but uh, it does have comfort access so pressing the ridge lines here locks the car you get a confirmation beep then unlocking and all four doors has this as well so I like that so let's quick look here and just show the soft close that pulls those doors in it's part of the uh, executive package So I can either use the remote or the race section here. And I can either shut the hatch like this with this button, or I want to lock the car at the same time by pressing this button. This button here will close the hatch and then 
lock it automatically. So if this is the last thing I'm doing with the car, I'm gonna grab my last bag and I'm already parked the car and got my things out and I say, all right, I'm gonna lock it. I can just hit this, walk away, and the car locks. Not to press anything else. And also with these M Sport package, you can get the optional 20 uh, inch wheels is what this one has. And with 20 inch wheels, I think that really sets this car apart from the rest of the X5s because um, right away you can see the tires. You know, these tires look like steamrollers. You know, just how wide they are. There are there are three, uh, there are 315, 35, 20, and I think I believe it's a 275 up front. So definitely um, beefy tire back there. I think for the winter. Um, the owner did provide me some winter tires, so I'm going to put those on um, if I decide to go to the mountains because even these are all seasons, just the width of these alone could make it difficult in the snow because, you know, a narrow tire is a little better than a big fat tire in the snow. So now we'll make our way into the inside. And this car is finished in black Dakota leather with the uh, fine line wood trim. And I was trying to find one when I was searching without wood trim. Uh, it was very hard. And when I saw this one, I was able to live with this because it's not that high gloss, bright, kind of artificial look, look. It has a real natural feel and look to it. Um, so I feel I could live with this. Um, you can see right away, you got the M logo on the door sill. You got the that pedal is M. These two pedals here aren't standard. Uh, you get the standard black pedals, but I wanted to complete the look with the aluminum pedals, so I ordered these on Amazon. Um, they're really easy to install. You have um, full automatic headlights. They activate, obviously, when it's, when it's dusk and turn off when dawn. They activate if you're in auto settings. Light wipers are on automatic. They fully activate. And we step inside, shut the door, and I'm gonna do is press the start button. And since it does have um, power telescope and steering wheel, that steering wheel does lower and telescope towards you. This car had 44,000 miles when I purchased it. I um, only had it for about a month and I've already added a couple thousand miles to it. Um, it it's so, so, much, so much fun to drive. Um, it's hard to explain. You really have to get behind the wheel to experience one. If you're familiar with BMWs, if you're familiar with the 3 Series or 5 Series and how easy the car just steers around the corner, you won't be disappointed with the X5. I, you get that same feel. And I think that the M Sport package, I think it just really completes the uh, look. And with the M adaptive suspension, it just can it fine tunes it even further. So you have different drive modes in here. I have um, I have comfort, sport, and then sport plus, and along with the eco. And when you go in here, you see sport. And I have it programmed just to change the suspension and the steering. I didn't want to change the transmission, but if I need the transmit transmission change, I go to sport plus. And by going to sport plus, now you'll see in here it says the traction. Dynamic traction control is activated, which means it's going to allow a little bit more freedom from the wheels to slip, but it's going to still have that safety net there in case things were to get um, beyond the driver's control. And also when you're in, on the highway, I notice when you're in Sport Plus, the revs climb briefly to show um, almost like it's, uh, I know the throttle is obviously more, more sensitive, more aggressive, but I think that the transmission downshifts one gear. So going here to um, got fully automatic climate control. Even the, the uh, passenger has settings to adjust their fan speed. So if the passenger doesn't want any airflow, they can shut that off individually. And I think that's pretty cool. I've never seen that in the car before. It has different fans for different um, zones. Usually you can control temperature but there's always going to be airflow coming out of the vents because there's usually one main fan powering the unit. 
Um, you have heated ventilated seats. These are options that I really wanted to get, which again was hard to find with the X5, uh, with, with, with what I wanted. Got two cup holders in here, which I'm gonna go here in the next clip, but I'll show you guys just how much it accommodates. And if you look here, there's controls. It's got this ceramic controls. If you've been looking for them and you didn't know what the ceramic controls are, basically it's these um, gloss, kind of like these dark gloss like uh, controls. Otherwise, you kind of get this aluminum finish, kind of like what's around this uh, start button. So if you didn't have ceramic controls, if you didn't want to know what it looked like, basically it looked like all the controls will look like this around the trims. So that's just only mainly for this area and the climate control knobs. I have adapter cruise control with the stop and go function. So at a, if traffic comes to a stop, um, this X5 can actually bring this X5 to a stop and it'll hold it there and wait until traffic resumes. And then once it resumes, either it does it automatically or I gotta press the resume button on its own. That's a safety feature. Just make sure that you're, you're telling the car it's okay to proceed. Um, it's got paddle shifters and it has automatic wipers and these are the wipers I prefer if you have auto wipers. That's mainly for um, basically you, you press this button here, turn it on, you get a green light. That tells you it is on. So the wipers are now in automatic mode. And once you turn the car off, the, the wipers are off. They're not going to go back to automatic. With some of the cars I experienced, you have the stalk which goes you know, low or off auto but by being at positional setting, you never know if it's on or off. And like I said, I had an incident in the car wash and had my wipers uh, ripped off. You can see there's different various settings. You can see I'm averaging 19.8 miles per gallon. That's with me being somewhat aggressive occasionally and then somewhat on the highway where I'm using the eco mode. This car can read speed limits. It's got a little camera up here in the windshield. And what this can do, it uh, reads the speed limit. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a heads-up display. And right now it's saying, you know, you can see the mile per hour and the 25, the speed limit. And if I were to say like I were to change a song or something, you can see where I can get settings to, basically I can keep my hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, and I can select uh, different channels or I can go over to, um, you know, different tracks if I prefer it. Home link. This is a light to tell you that basically when we arm the alarm system, it blinks like a strobe light, um, and just basically lets everyone else know around the car who may be considering breaking in that this car is armed. You have your SOS if you need it to emergency basis like uh, OnStar. It's got a fully panoramic sunroof, so basically I'm gonna pull this back, bring the shade back. And you can see how bright this is. And I like the fact that this panoramic isn't just a mesh. It's a full solid um, headliner. So when it's in place, you don't get any light at all. It's not transparent. So pressing it, you get both the front and rear uh, class they tilt to position. I'm pressing it again. And then you slide it, just press it once and it slides back. It stops in a position where BW feels is best to minimize the wind uh, buffering at highway speeds. And press once again to close it back, or if you desire, if you want it to go a little bit further, press it again. And you can typically, maybe I would say you can drive maybe 35 to 40 miles an hour. Once you get beyond that, you need to start putting this into position because it starts to hear a lot of the, the buffering from the wind. And pressing again, they obviously close the shade. And the shade closes. Like I said, I'm gonna show you the shade, just how um, solid it is. You really cannot tell that this, you know, nothing like comes through, which is really good for protections. Because I had cars with the mesh shades, and basically, it, what it is, what it's called, is a shade. It does it shades you, but there's sometimes where in you know, these hot temperatures where it cannot 
help me with the heat. Turn your radio on, obviously, with the Bang & Olufsen, you get this, uh, I want to say tweeter, or what they call an acoustic lens. Similar to what my Q7 did, where they removed out of the dashboard, so... So... And that's, that's pretty much what happens. There's a little LED light here, so at nighttime you see a little LED light, and then there's also a light here underneath the speaker grill. Only the, only the driver and passenger have these little, basically LED light here that... This car had, does have a blind spot, and it is a true blind spot in a sense where if a car is fast approaching from the rear, it will give me a warning, as well as if a car is actually cruising in the blind spot, you'll know there's a light. Um, if you activate the turn signal with the car in your blind spot, you get a couple flashes in the mirror along with the vibration in the steering wheel. So the steering wheel will then vibrate, alerting you that there is a car there car does have lane departure um, warning there is no prevention but if you start to drift out of your lane the steering wheel will vibrate to simulate rumble strips when you know you know that it's detecting the lane markings when you see these two little dash lines there are two arrows that point in and that's let you know that the camera can actually detect uh, the lane when you're in eco mode or it's called eco pro mode you see here that I've saved so far 5.9 miles on the, on this tank just by using eco mode, and it you get this little gate, this little power gauge, similar to what you'll find like a hybrid car, where basically the more you know application for the uh, throttle, you know, runs the power gauge, and then when you brake, it's charging the battery. Um, this is not like a battery like you find in a hybrid car. This is just more to keep the accessories running while the car stopped and is efficient because it's not charging the car exactly while the car is driving that uh, most cars will do it when it runs the alternator it tries to only do it when the car is actually coasting or braking and when in the sense of eco pro mode it only does it when you're braking when you're coasting in eco mode um, you'll notice the rpms will drop and what's happening is the transmission is decoupling from the engine which basically is like a neutral, coasting neutral, and allows you to travel a little bit further without using um, any any fuel or very minimal fuel. Yeah. This is a quick button to turn off the driver assist functions. So hitting this button brings up more functions. So either I can customize this. So right now, this turning off this right now is set to just turn off the lane departure warning system. But also I can turn off the fork collision warning. I can have all or just a few different options I want at a time. And obviously, activating it back with the green light tells all systems are on. Uh, it has pedestrian warning. Uh, it only can detect the pedestrians during the daytime. In order for you to get uh, nighttime pedestrian warning, you have to get the night vision package, which is a, another um, add-on, which is very rare to see. It's got fully automatic uh, windows with uh, pinch protection, power folding mirrors. So hitting the mirrors here, they fold in. And these mirrors, if you forget, if you're driving down the road, forget the mirrors are folded, the speed is above 30 miles an hour, they automatically open up. So by activating the camera function, there's different, different cameras that you can use. So here, by hitting the park function, gives me access to the top-down view. And it gives you a bird's eye, typical, it's really clear high resolution. Hitting, selecting here, the rear, can give me the rear view. And you can see there's different um, guidance lines in here. It shows you your trajectory and your current line. Um, obviously activating reverse defaults to the rear camera or if I, if I change it up, so if I'm in reverse right now, I can actually select out of it and just have this as my default. So whichever last one, last setting you leave here in reverse, changes your default back in park and then here's another camera function hitting this one just a dedicated camera turns on the front camera so this is the front camera system this is just the front of the queue so if you were driving off-road or something maybe a hill and you can't see over the hood you needed to see exactly what is in front of you that would be a feature for that obviously there's hill descent control hitting that you know, you can get different speeds up, up to five. You can change using the cruise control up to 10 miles an hour, and it can hold that downhill. 
um, uses different uh, uses the ABS to help make sure that on loose surfaces it doesn't slip. Um, there's parking brake, electronic parking brake, and then auto. All right, so moving on to the center console, it splits up like this way. I keep a couple of things in here. There's this uh, smartphone connect, which I don't have the adapter for it. Basically, by plugging your phone in here for the adapter, you can take advantage of the car's exterior antenna by getting a little bit better reception, clearer calls, and then you can use the, you know, obviously have a direct connection to the uh, audio system to control your music. If you don't have this, you'll just basically have this console, but um, to move this out the way, it just clicks up. It doesn't really come out. Um, there's the USB and auxiliary outlet in here, and there's also a power port in there as well. Here are some other things. So you can you can set hotkeys for here. Right now, the only one that's set is just the map facing, you know, but hitting this button gives you um, that instant navigation. So instead of going through and say, all right, I need to go to hit this, my music, and hit this, you know, go, going here, you can automatically just have one quick hotkey that can take you directly there to where you want without having to cycle through all the menu systems. Just a quick overview of the menu systems. You have, you know, multimedia, your radio, telephone, every self-explanatory navigation. And clicking on each one of these, you can just, you know, show the map. And if you want, you can have split screen, have half map, half music, or, you know, vice versa. Or you just have it all music, or you can have two maps if you want. The, the customization, levels on this car is pretty great and I like I like that and I think that's what draws me back to BMW each time is the level of customization you can do. You can see the real time traffic on here and what I like too is when you're giving it a command on here um, you can just speak it all together. You don't have to uh, okay destination. Okay where's destination? Okay uh, input an address next uh, street, next, city, next. No, you can just say the whole thing all in one sentence and it will um, it will load it automatically in one step, which is very helpful. So let me see if I can pull up a random address here. Let's see. Pressing the button on the steering wheel. Navigate to Please repeat. Navigate to 2105 Forest Avenue, San Jose, California. Processing your input. So it probably has to decipher what I say. I do talk fast, so sometimes it Did you mean 215 Forest Hill Avenue, San Jose? Number two. 215 Forest Avenue. San Jose, start guidance, or add as another destination. Cancel. Moving into the driver's seat. And this is how I would you know, drive the car. This is my normal seating position. You can see here I got the wheel options to telescope the wheel, bring it back and raise it or lower it, depending on what I like. This is the low as it goes. And there's also the heated steering wheel option. So if you get the heated steering wheel, this is where your button would be. Uh, this wheel has really nice feel to it. It's just, it's soft. It's just, it feels great in your hands. And I, I think that, that makes it also fun thing though when you drive I think just having because this is this is how you drive you you hold a steering wheel and I think the, the starting off with this you know makes it obviously if a car feels good in your hands then you know it's, it's gonna and it feels good to drive it makes it a nice fun package to drive and I said going through the different seating options raising lower I got the thigh extensions It's so many different here, and if I need to go back, all I need is press this, press and hold, and everything goes back to my normal settings. Right. So 
so my knees are tight and that doesn't mean this is this is where it is because like i said these seats can slide back now i am really comfortable and to make it even more the setting back here i can recline i can recline back here and it, it, it this part here feels comfortable like so i'm five eight i'm sitting behind myself this i could i could relax back here if i needed to um, i could take a nap back here if i needed to and plenty plenty of room back here now we're gonna try the third row i am to be honest with you i'm not sure if i'm gonna fit back here but i'm gonna, I'm gonna try it At least in the Q7, I think an adult could tolerate it for maybe a short trip at here, strictly for children. Strictly children only in here. And I'm going to drop this clip to show. My knees, are, my, my, fears, my fear pinched. My knees are squished. And I'm, I'm sitting like completely upright. I, there's there's no, po no possible way at all. So I can see why some people would not want the third row. I won't fault it to my who doesn't want it because there is a big limitation. What do you guys think? I have enough leg room. Do you? Yes. This I is all I need. It's like inside Greg. the trunk. I like it, but the only thing I, I don't like about it is the cup holders because um it could uh it, um, it doesn't hold your does it hold your cup very well? Yes, and I like this button because I don't even know what it does. Well, it looks like you can turn the mm -hmm. air conditioning on and off, like the vent. So if if you want air, you can turn it on. If you don't want air, you turn it off. What do you think? Opening the hatch here. I'll show you how much room there is. And traditional X5, they've been doing this for years, or actually decades with this, is the tailgate. And this tailgate gives it a um, extra feature, which comes in handy a lot. It can support a lot of weight on here. I'm not gonna tell you the exact weight on it because I don't know just yet. I can research it and I'll edit it here in the bottom of the video. But I'm gonna do a separate video on, on well, not a separate video. I'm gonna do a separate clip in here with the cargo space with all seats folded down as well as seats folded up. Okay, I have several suitcases here. I have two large suitcases, two medium and one carry-on. And obviously this is probably be excessive. Um, than what you'll find for normal traveling, but I'm gonna test it all in the back of the X5 and we'll see if it all fits. This would be a good representation if you say like you're gonna pick up a couple people from the airport and they had a lot of luggage or you had a you know family of four and then travel heavy. So here we go, we're gonna get it all back here. So with the seats um, upright, the only thing that's folded down is third row, which is typical where both X5s are gonna look like because not every X5 is third row. We'll start loading them up. So first, large suitcase. Second large suitcase. And we have carry-on. Thanks to the tailgate, you risk minimizing scratching your rear bumper because you can always fold this down. And 
all shuts. All right, so here it is with the cargo seats, uh, with the thermo seats up. And there is no power function, so um, to lower the seat, flip them, drop them down. If you needed to flip them up, I would think it's probably easier to grab it from that side. Otherwise, you'll be leaning over. So these lights aren't flickering like that in real life. That's just a the camera. These are the headlights. And this is what it looks like when they're on. These are the LED headlights. Um, if you just have the, I think Xenon comes standard with it, with the Xenon, you get your traditional uh, headlight through a projector. Uh, with this, you get, it's almost like a, like a halogen reflector, which I don't get because, I'm not saying that these lights are bad, but I don't get the sharp cutoff like I would find uh, with the projector light. You know, I feel like early 90s, reflectors were a popular thing. And then we found out how to focus the light beam by using projectors, but now we're slightly going backwards. You know, you got these reflector lenses inside of here. That's light just hitting the reflector and bouncing back. But the, the lights are pretty bright at night. And these fog lights only work when headlights are on. Uh, first, I've seen a BMW, usually you can turn them on with a the parking light. Also, the fog lights illuminate depending on uh, if you have the switch in automatic setting, depending which way the wheel is pointing, will turn on um, the fog light. And we have the LED package. You're gonna get the um, LED turn signal. If you just had the xenon you'll get an incandescent light looking here from the side but this is a twin turbo um four liter 4.4 liter v8 pumps at 445 horsepower and 480 pound feet of torque it's um i could see why people would say it's too much power when i was researching it there were people who said that and I didn't understand what they meant. I said, like, how can it be? How can a car have too much power? Well, I can, as a power junkie myself, I would never say it's too much, like I can't handle it. But I would say for day to day street use, there's no there's no opportunity for me to be able to take advantage of this car and just open it full throttle and just hold it there. More than like two seconds, there, there, this, this car picks up speed so fast. Um, I've seen claims of 0 to 60 at 4.3. Um, I've seen quarter miles at 12.9 at 106 to 109 miles an hour. If you think about it, that is Jeep SRT territory. I'm surprised they haven't made any, any direct comparisons, any mashups with this car against a Jeep SRT or some type of SRT car. But I think the M is more purposeful for, the, for that power. I think with the bigger brakes and the suspension, I think that is a perfect blend.